you were involved in organising for Obama's 2008 um, election campaign. How did you find that experience? Um, well, I think it was for a lot of us, it was a really transformative experience to work on the 2008 campaign for a lot of reasons, one of which, of course, was we had an extraordinary candidate. Um, it was also an extraordinary time in history. I think for a lot of us on the progressive left, we felt that it was a real opportunity for the first time in a long time to have such a wide open presidential field and, you know, such clear understanding on the part of the, the majority of the American public that it was time to move on from what had been some very damaging Republican policies. Um, so I think a lot of us were really excited to be able to seize on that moment. We were excited that at the moment that that time in history was happening, we had a candidate who was inspiring mm -hmm. a lot of people, including um, young voters and Americans abroad who have historically been underrepresented in our elections. and we successfully managed to achieve um, an unusually high turnout from those minority groups, poor voters, um, Americans abroad, which I was working on, um, African American voters obviously. Um, so it was just a really wonderful kind of moment of excitement and also of achievement on election night to stand there and realize that what we'd accomplished. One of the things that Obama did that I think uh, goes against some traditional mainstream political thinking is that instead of attempting this kind of triangulation of being close to your opponent. Um, you know, he, he actually drew some very clear dividing lines between himself and the Republicans and really inspired people. One of the, one of the great themes of that election was hope and uh, a new president. Has that, to some extent, uh, raised expectations of, of, uh, of his presidency that perhaps he hasn't been able to fulfil? Um. The reality is that the President Obama that we elected on November 4th, 2008, um, the hopes and the dreams and the imagination that we all had for him um, were impossible for any human being to fulfill. Um, and I think that's no fault of the President's. I think to a large extent it's, it's our fault um, for being slightly unrealistic about what a presidency is and what a president does. Having said that, I remain really surprised and impressed by what he has been able to accomplish, even with a unilater unilaterally obstructionist Republican Congress, even with, with what we have to face is the worst economic recession of the last hundred years. So what would you put as his main achievements? So I think, you know, the first thing you have to put at the top of any achievement is health care reform. Um, which, although many people would say it isn't the perfect reform yet, which I would agree with, I think it is a massive step forward. Um, and already we've seen 2.5 million young Americans who previously wouldn't have had access to health care um, getting coverage under their parents' insurance. Already, um, just yesterday, a report was released that said that um, we're starting to see the costs of Medicare actually come down, which means that it looks like the Affordable Care Act is doing what it was designed to do, which was reduce Medicare costs, so that it is a sustainable program. We had real concerns just a couple of years ago about whether Medicare could, could continue to exist in its current form. Mm -hmm. It looks now like we might have solved that problem, so that's a huge plus. So one of the things that people looking from outside the US, <coughs> obviously uh, we probably think about foreign policy a lot more sure. um, than some of the domestic policy, <clears throat> on Iraq, you've seen the withdrawal of troops and more emphasis on Afghanistan, yep. which is what he promised. Although exactly some what of the he said he would do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which is, um, some of the anti-war anti kind of left, I think, uh, thought he was going to do something that he's, he wasn't actually promising he was going to do. We also saw, saw the, the killing of uh, Osama bin Laden. Mm -hmm. Has Obama's presidency made the world a safer place? Well, I'm, I'm really an interesting one on the task on this question because I think the two things you cited are huge. Um, first of all, the end of the war in Iraq, which is exactly what he said he would do in a measured and careful way, but um, on, a, on a good timeline, um, is massive. Obviously, the war on terror has been fought in a way that you know, whatever you, whatever your position on the political political side of it is, you have to look at it and say it's been hugely effective. We are clearly much safer now. And in fact, Foreign Affairs magazine just published a long article arguing that we live in effectively the safest period of time in history. Yeah. Um, I also look at, and this is a slightly controversial one, but I also look at Obama's handling of of um, the Arab Spring and a lot of the democracy movements abroad. 
which I think most other American presidents, both Democrat and Republican, would have by fair means or foul, I suspect, managed to screw up in some way. Uh -huh. um, because the tendency of American politi pol foreign politics and foreign policy in the past has been very much towards oriented towards credit taking or trying to influence things in a slightly heavy handed way. Um, and I was very impressed by the way that Obama was very careful to intervene with a fairly soft touch but clear signaling at each point throughout um, and, and basically to take the same position that he's taken in domestic politics which is that it is for the people themselves to stand up and say what they, you know, stand up for the things they believe in and promote democracy um, and if we as friendly, you know, believers in democracy can be helpful then so be it. Um, I think that was handled very deftly and could have gone very, very wrong. It certainly seems that way when you look at some of his would-be um, rivals in the Republican Party whose approach to foreign, uh, foreign affairs leaves quite a lot to be desired. It's a bit of a bludgeon, isn't it? Um, <clears throat> I mean, one of the things before we get on to the actual organising for um, for the election in November, you have to look at what opposition Obama's going to have. Mm. Um, Republican candidates, have they got anyone that can... Um, well, so, <laughs> how shall I say, it's difficult because I try to be polite and yeah. I try to be constructive um, when I speak about other members of, of uh, the political sphere. Um, there are a lot of very worrying people out there. I certainly think that, um, and I very much hope that Rick Santorum will not be any kind of actual candidate, just because I think it's not good for the American people to have somebody with so much bigotry in his heart. Are any um, of the Republican frontrunners not worrying? Um, are any of them not worrying? <laughs> <laughs> None of the Republican frontrunners are not worrying, that's a double negative, but I think they're interestingly all worrying in slightly different ways. Um, I think, you know, Mitt Romney, who is, let's face it, likely to be the nominee at this point, um, I think he is, he's an interesting one because what he says now is deeply worrying. And if you took anything that he currently said remotely seriously, I think he would be a very disturbing person to allow in the presidency, particularly on foreign policy, where he's been, um, you know, making some very bizarre statements, um, and where his entire agenda seems to be based on trying to gin up animus and 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 loathing of President Obama, supposedly for being polite to world leaders, which seems to be his main objection. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Um, I think that the Romney's great weakness is that he's the least sincere man alive, um, and there's a there's a great deal of dispute about what he really thinks about any issue. Um, mm. He's been on every side of everything, um, so I think the worry that I have is that some people who otherwise might vote Democrat, if Romney were the nominee, might go, eh, sure he says crazy things now, but he's been okay in the past. Maybe he'll be fine. And well, in reality, I, I was wondering because the Republican Party is clearly deeply split and has had real problems within it for some time. Um, and I think possibly going back even to George Bush one, yeah. um, who was a one-term president, when he was unseated by Clinton, yeah. uh, it was the time of Ross Perot's big um, vote. And a lot of that vote was from Republican voters who basically didn't want to vote for, um, well, I guess, what they saw as a moderate Republican. Mm. That's not necessarily how I him, but um, is there a danger if the Republicans choose a moderate candidate that the Tea Party will have generate their own? Well, I don't. I'm not sure that I believe that there is a Tea Party movement um, per se. Um, I think if you look at the behaviour of the people who describe themselves as Tea Party now, um, and as compared to what they said their beliefs were about a year ago, their voting behaviour in no way matches up with their professed beliefs. Uh -huh. So um, Rick Santorum is clearly the most interventionist, um, you know, pro-big pro government um, believer in the absence of personal liberty that the Republican Party has ever put forward, at least in my lifetime. Uh -huh. um, and, and he has huge support from the Tea Party activists who supposedly want the government hands off of, their, off of them. So I don't think there is a Tea Party movement. I think there is animus and loathing and hatred and um, kind of right-wing populism that is stirred up, and that's what they're looking for. Whether Mitt Romney will be able to kind of tame that beast or ride that tide is an interesting question, and I think potentially not. 
A lot of people forget that in 2008, the Republican voter turnout was actually suppressed. There was about 1% fewer Republican-identified voters participating in that election. All the increase in turnout in, in 2008 was on the Democratic side. Uh, and I hope, that actually, quite frankly, that we might see Mitt being equally unable to stir up the interests of, of, of the Republicans.